something that people don't want to look at is the way that they feel about other people, the judgments that you're putting out into the world. And just kind of coming back to yourself, knowing that this is the only person you're going to be with for the rest of your life, the only body that you're going to have. And do you want to spend the rest of your life going and hating it? Or do you want to feel comfortable in it? If you're not conscious about your investment strategy, you won't end up where you want to be, not financially or as a human. On this show, we interview highly successful investors and share how they overcame limitations to become unstoppable forces of success. If you're ready to learn what it is to be a conscious investor so you can end up where you want, keep listening. I'm so excited that you are here today, Ashley. This has been something we've had on the books for quite some time. And I'm just curious, one, welcome, and two, what do you do and how did you get started? I'm so thankful to be here. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. So I am a life and wellness coach for content creators. Um, My journey started back in 2011. I'll give you the medium version. I decided, you know, we're not going to go the short, we're not going to go the long, we'll go medium. All right. Um, (laughs) It was after I had, I've always been interested in health and fitness. And after I had my first son, I really prepared for him to come. I was so excited. Best day of my life. But I really didn't prepare for what happened to my body. (laughs) And as silly as that sounds, like, obviously, we see our body growing. But like, mentally, I wasn't prepared for what happened. And I was determined to lose that weight. And I was willing to do anything. I went to some pretty extreme measures in order to lose that weight. Um, Along that journey, I found that I could be a health and fitness coach on social media. A friend of mine was posting how she was running this challenge group. And I'm like, this sounds really cool. I spend a lot of time on Facebook. I I wasn't really digging the stay at home mom thing. Like if you're a stay at home mom, God bless you. Like that is a hard job. But at the same time, I didn't want to go out and get a job. (laughs) So I'm like, I have to find a way where I could, you know, be working on Facebook and um, staying accountable, accountable to my own health and fitness goals, then let's do it. So I dove in right away with that. And um, it took off pretty quickly. But it really started me down, like, not the greatest path in the world. Um, we were really taught that our body was our business. And to make these transformations happen, we would make more money. I felt like if I changed my body, my whole world would change. And so I went to, like I said, extreme measures with disordered eating. At one point I was addicted to stimulants, Um, just, just a really rough road of fighting my body. And eventually I overcame that addiction um, to Adderall. And I went on this next journey, which was like, okay, well, where do I fit in here? Still, still not happy with my body, still trying to change it. And in 2018, I came to a point where I was like, I'm done. I'm done hating myself. I'm done chasing these transformations. I really just want to love who I am and love my body and not have to feel like I am wrong all of the time. Like I I thought something was wrong with me because I couldn't maintain results. And so I kind of, I talk about a pendulum. So I, I was way over here in diet culture and I really swung that pendulum over to the other side to anti diet. And I was all in like, you talked about weight loss. I was like, you're wrong. Like I was, I was in deep over there and it served its purpose because I did heal my relationship to myself, to my body. I never thought I could feel confident while I gained 60 pounds, but I did. And I was like, we're in the fun clothes. And I just started to feel really free until I didn't. And it was August of 2020. And I felt like I had just as many rules over this side on the pendulum in the, in the anti-diet space as I did in, in the diet culture space. I want, I was ready to lose some weight. I wanted to step on a scale, but I felt like I was wrong. And I had a conversation with a friend of mine and she's like, Ashley, this is your life. You get to choose what you do. At the time I had stepped out of health and wellness coaching and I was doing more confidence coaching. So I was helping people to heal their relationship with their body. And I started out on this, on my own journey. I didn't tell anybody about it because I had been preaching so hard this other way. And in that process, I really started to work with my subconscious mind. I became a a practitioner of NLP. um, And I ended up losing 60 pounds in three years doing my first bikini competition this year. And just really shifting my identity to a space where you can make change from a, a space of love. And 
you really are worthy of whatever it is that you truly desire and you get to do it your way. There's a million different ways out there to do things. Um, but working with the subconscious mind and using NLP to make identity shifts, you're able to find that way that really truly works for you. So that's kind of the medium version of how I got into life and wellness coaching for content creators. I really have a passion for content creators. It's one of my favorite parts of business. Um, I love creating content. I love helping other people um, create have them create content that feels good to them. And what I found is there's a huge connection between the way you show up for yourself and the way that you show up for your content. Oh my gosh, Ashley, this is the most riveting story. And you and I have spoken before, but we've never gotten to go down this path. And I'm actually conscious investor. I'm so excited that we get to experience this together. And, and just, I want to say this conscious investor we've, you've probably been around somebody if it's not your own body that has expanded as this life form has occupied your body, you probably have a sibling, a friend, a cousin, a coworker. You have somebody in your life who's gone through this whole metamorphosis. And here's the reality is that gentlemen, you go through a lot of physiological changes as well. And it can really get um, kind of under the bus, in my opinion, you know, where there might be more stigmas that really they're starting to surface, but you guys deal with your own set of things. And so all of this is really, I'm confident this is going to support every single person listening right now, because as you were talking, Ashley, I could totally hear, you know, like, wow, um, I could hear like the high school jocks, you know, the guys that were playing all the sports saying like, wow, I was in the best shape of my life. And now I'm a middle-aged man. And what is this thing in front of me that's preventing my ab, my, my six pack that used to be there from touching, like there's something between the desk and I, this is so weird. And, and women, I can just, can't we just resonate with trying to get back into, cause our bodies are in this constant flux. Oh my gosh. Your story is amazing. I would love to know more. I, I I was literally writing down like, oh my gosh, I have to ask Ashley this. I have to ask. Okay. First of all, I have to ask. This is such a weird question. It might feel like a weird question. Were you thin before? So what I was your physique thought. like before? And, and like, how, what was that part of that process for you? So I never really was like overweight. I was a competitive cheerleader in high school. Um, I got married when I was 23 or 24. And I remember like right before getting married, like my, like kind of that weight kind of creeping on, you know, like, right. you know, you've got that freshman 15 and then you, you kind of balance around. But I just remember uh, my mom had made a comment to me and she was like, well, this is just what happens. And I like, for some reason, that comment stuck really hard. Um, oh, yeah. So I, I wasn't ever really overweight. I've always been really muscular. Um, I actually had a lot of like, um, feeling a certain way about that. Like I have really muscular legs and I've always got teased about it when I was in school. So I didn't enjoy the way that my legs looked, but I was I was, I would say average. I wasn't like yeah. super skinny, but I wasn't overweight. Um, and then right after I got married is when we got pregnant right away. So like two months later. And so it kind of just kind of snowballed from there. Oh, it, it does snowball. And, and really, honestly, this is such a relative question. Um, I myself, like I've always been, you know, in an athlete, I've never been the twiggy type person. I've always had some muscu muscle to me. And then this creep in the middle years where I'm like, okay, I actually need to deal with this. What the heck? <laughs> you know, it just, and just that aha, like realization, which is so interesting. Um, I was wondering also, if you could talk about this concept one, what is NLP? Let's start there. So NLP is neuro linguistic programming. It's basically okay. the study of your subconscious mind and, um, working to make identity level shifts. So a lot of times we start to try to make changes at like the habit level where we're like, okay, we're going to change these habits. And then you only can willpower your way through habits so long. But when you start to work with your subconscious mind and you start to make an identity shift, those habits become effort, like effortless. I wouldn't say effortless, but they right. become easier to make and you don't have to put as much effort into like sustaining it. So a lot of work that I do um, 
we'll do like hypnosis. Um, there's like time techniques. There's lots of different modalities and, and things that we do, but it's really like rewiring your subconscious mind to be on, on your side for what you want, because we've trained our subconscious mind to be where it's at right now. And it functions our life like 99.9. I think it's like 99.996% of the time our subconscious is running the show yes. and it's showing up for us and it's doing its job. But the cool thing is, is we can retrain it to do it even better or what we want it to do. And so that's what that is. Um, I've had over like 500 hours of training in NLP. Uh, wow. That's so interesting. When I think about habits and, and conscious investor, I'm sure one of the first things that came to mind is James Clear, Atomic Habits or Charles Duhigg, you know, the power of habit and such. And it does like, it's very interesting. And it's great to have this science as to what habits look like. But I, I completely agree. It is that connection between our identity, our subconscious mind. Um, our subconscious mind is so mighty and powerful. So what are some steps that people take if they're if they're just scratching the surface? What is is there anything that someone who has kind of gone down the normal path of and there's nothing wrong with it of atomic habits that's we'll just put that in one category almost like your pendulum from earlier right where okay we have the scientific research on you know just how habits work and then we have um maybe there are no habits on the other side and then maybe we'll put NLP in the middle just as a balancing part like how does somebody really find themselves centered and what are some steps they can take so the first thing that I would say is it's really about learning about yourself. Like a lot of times we don't know how we work, what uh, activates us, what does things for us. So starting, I always say like awareness is the catalyst that heals all. So if you can start to just kind of be aware of the things that are going on, the actions that you're taking, the thoughts that you're thinking, uh -huh. and kind of getting curious about like, well, why did I do that? Why did I want to go to the gym this morning, but instead I hit the snooze button? Or why did I want to eat a healthy meal, but instead I went through the drive-thru? Those sorts of things. And just kind of like work your way backwards. Drop the shame, drop the guilt, drop the judgment. Just getting really curious about what's happening. And that way we can start to, to like rewire the way that it works. So I would say... Self-awareness is going to be your superpower through it all. The habits also like consistency, that's going to also help you to rewire your subconscious mind, obviously. And, you know, I haven't read the book Atomic Habits, but I just listened to a podcast from him. Um, and what he was kind of saying the same thing, like eventually those habits become an identity and yeah. it's something that, ha you know, that's when you can start to add in like more habits on top of that. So anyways, I'm getting off on a tangent. Yeah. And do the habit stacking, but I love that. And I talk so often on the show about raising our level of awareness constantly and con having that consistent approach of curiosity over shame. And it's just so I'm like, Oh my gosh, <laughs> Ashley, we are so vibing on the same frequency because that is it's so powerful. And, and all the labels that we put on ourselves and say, Oh, well, I'm literally, we call ourselves bad, like, and we shame ourselves and we do it to ourselves. So I'm curious, how did you ultimately free yourself? So for me, it really was taking all of the things that I learned from all of the different, you know, journeys that I went on and really stepping back and saying, what do I want? Not what everybody else wants. Cause I, I think this is a big deal is a lot of people will set goals and this can go for anything, not just health and fitness, but a lot of times we'll see like, you know, if, if you are looking at that man who has that six pack and you're like, I want that. Do you really want that? Or do you want the confidence that's, that he's exuding? Do you want the way that he should live? Do you want that? Do you want his life? Like, do you know the sacrifices he makes? Do you know what his daily life looks like? And maybe in the future, you do want that. But maybe right now, it just looks like I need to make three habits where I am walking more, I am eating better and sleeping, sleeping better. Um, So it's really just it was for me, it was really deciding what I wanted, what nobody else wanted. I put my blinders on. I said, you know, what is it that you want? And I did want to lose weight. And then it was doing it my way. It was 
committing, I committed for an entire year. So this is like my secret to identity shifting is you have to commit and you have to be devoted. And that doesn't mean showing up hundred percent of the time perfectly, because that's definitely not what happened. Um, but it was just like, okay, I, this didn't work. I'm going to try something new. So it was really just like partnering up with myself and taking everything that I learned and applying it to the way my life was, what my priorities are, what my values were, and taking action consistently from there. Oh my gosh, I love this. I, I love like really getting clear about knowing what it is that you want and and just how you're talking about, well, that person might look this certain way, but do I want to adopt their, do I want that lifestyle? Do I want do I want to forego the, the ice cream or the cake or the wine or the, you know, like, you know, I mean, you have to have that come to Jesus moment as to like, what am I willing to do to get Am I willing to do that? That's such a powerful, um, powerful element to know, but I appreciate how you even drew that deeper into say, well, that's the superficial part. What is below beneath that confidence? Yeah. There's always something deeper. A lot of people are like any goal that you have, even if we look, we talk about money, right? Mm -hmm. Like like everybody's putting out on the internet that they're making this much money and that much money. And you're like, okay, well, I think I want that. And then you start working towards that and you feel like you're banging your head against the wall and you feel frustrated and you're doing all the things that people are telling you to, but you're not seeing the results. Almost a lot of the times that I've worked with clients, it's because they don't want that. They're working towards something that they don't want. And so when we figure out what they do want and how they do want to feel, and we switch the direction a little bit, then they get to where they want to go and they they feel more satisfied than frustrated. Is there like a little indicator that pops up aside from maybe they're not the obvious where you're not achieving what you want to achieve, but is there, are there things that you can pick up now after you've been coaching for so long where you can see, you can see the writing on the wall, like, oh, whoa they're not in alignment with what they truly want. Is it obvious or? I feel like it's, it's different for everybody, but if somebody is for myself, I don't know if you know much about human design, but (laughs) um, I'm a a manifesting generator. And so frustration is when I know I'm not in alignment and I'm not an expert in that, but well, but anyways, so I know when I'm feeling frustrated, I'm usually not aligned with where I'm going and I'm not going after something that I want. So for me, it's been that self-awareness piece. Like what are those feelings and those triggers that happen? When I work with a client and they come to me, um, I recently just had a client who was like, I'm ready to lift weights five days a week, do all of these things. And she told me she was like ready to go. And then like a week in, I could tell that, that she wasn't following through with that. So we had to come back and be like, wait a second, where are you really? And what is it that you really want? And and we need to be where our feet are right now. And then maybe in a couple months, we can start going to the gym five days a week and we can start doing these other mm-hmm. things. And so, you know, a lot of times I even had a lot of people come to me when I did my bikini competition and they're like, I want to do that. And my first question to them is like, well, why do you want to do that? Because If you're wanting to do it for the wrong reasons, then it's not going to be a fun experience at all. (laughs) Yeah. So it's kind of just like in the way that people take actions after they say what they want to do and then how they're feeling, but really bringing up that self-awareness of, okay, like, how are you feeling while you're taking these actions? Yeah, we need to get uncomfortable and sometimes you're going to be frustrated, but like, is that frustration coming up over and over and over again? Then we're probably headed in the wrong, the wrong direction. I like that you j- you just mentioned if the frustration is coming up over and over and over again, I, f- I call them like red flags. Like, yeah. okay, first offense. Um, okay, great. I'm glad my, my subconscious mind and I have the awareness to even see it. The second time it's like, huh, okay, this is really interesting. By the third time I'm like, okay, just stop everything right now and let's just recalibrate and get really, really clear as to what's going on. Cause by the third time, three is my favorite number. And it, by the third time you generally have an idea as to there's something more going on here. This is more than I just am uncomfortable. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. I, I definitely feel that. And it took me like eight years to figure that out. <laughs> so. 
I remember in my last um, health and wellness company that I was a part of, I'm now on my own. Um, I started chasing everybody else's goals. And I just remember driving one day and it was like the sun hit me and I'm like, oh, this isn't what I want. That was when I started to really pay attention to to what am I working towards and why am I doing it? And is it what I want? Mm -hmm. That's interesting. You mentioned that you had a recent post on Instagram, which you have such a great, I love your, your work over on Instagram and I can tell you love what you do, but you were talking about that. Like you don't need to be trying to be like everybody else. And you and I run the same frequency because I would literally just written out, you know, like stop the secret to success you know, become the best damn version of yourself because you're the only you, but how do you get comfortable with that? I can hear so many people saying like, how do I get comfortable with that? How do I get comfortable in a world, Ashley, where, and, and actually the pendulum is swinging and, and women's physiques, like the profiles for women stuff is, is transitioning right now, which is beautiful. There's a lot more acceptance and such. And I think that, that now men are now coming under the scrutiny and have, I think it's actually flip-flopped. I think now women are like, oh no, we are banding together. We're going to be accepted. And men are kind of getting thrown under the bus with each other. And everybody has to be like, Hey, I'm middle-aged and I'm in the best shape of my life. So that's going to be interesting, but how do we come to a point to where we can say, I am healthy. All my numbers are healthy. My visceral fat is healthy. My, you know, bone structure is healthy, all of this. Right. But maybe I don't look the way the world says I should look in a way. How do we come to that deeper sense of self-acceptance? Yeah, I think that it's a lot of of inner work. It's a lot of getting uncomfortable. It's a lot of looking at the way that you feel about other people. I mean, that's something that people don't want to look at is, is the way that they feel about other people, the judgments that you're putting out into the world. And just, just kind of coming back to yourself, knowing that like, this is the only version, you know, the only person you're going to be with for the rest of your life, the only body that you're going to have. And do you want to spend the rest of your life going and hating it? Or do you want to feel comfortable in it? The other thing is, is especially like with showing up on social media, the goal with content is to attract people to you and repel people from you. And you have to get comfortable with that. I personally don't like it when people are like, you just, you know, give zero Fs or don't care what other people think, because you have to have a level of caring what other people think, especially if you're showing up as a leader, you're going to have to care what your, your audience thinks and not to a point to where you are, um, you know, changing yourself for them, but just being respectful, right? I, I feel like when we say, just throw all the opinions out, it kind of just gives us this little ego boost that probably we don't show up. And I always like to say of my son, he gives zero Fs about anything. He will show up wearing whatever he wants to school. And that supports him sometimes, but other times he doesn't treat people the way that he should be treating people, you know? So getting comfortable with attracting and repelling people mm -hmm. um, from you and just knowing that you showing up and sharing is going to help somebody, you know, it is going to spread hope and it's going, and we are influential people and we are very easily influenced also, but we can provide that influence to where maybe I can make somebody else feel comfortable in, in their skin and, you know, going back to remembering that your body is going to fluctuate and health does not have a size. Health is not a number. Um, and, and really feeling good about where you are and, and who you are. That was a long answer. I love that. I'm writing down health doesn't have a size or a number. Like it, it doesn't have drop. Yeah. That's so powerful and liberating when we can release all of that and just say, what is health? Yeah. And, you know, to me, health is always all encompassing and it wasn't for a really long time, but I, I learned through that journey of going through the anti-diet phase um, that it is your mind, your body and your soul. It's, it's all three of those. And it works together as a whole unit, not as separate parts. And I feel like we can a lot of times overcome that feeling of, um, I don't like the way my body looks by focusing like an all encompassing, focusing on your mind, your body and your soul. Mm -hmm. I, I really appreciate that. And, um, we were, 
my mind is going in 5 million different directions because we have a limited amount of time. And yet there are so many wonderful ways we can take this, this extraordinary conversation. So I'm going to pare this down and say, on behalf of the conscious investor, who would, you know, if, if the conscious investor, they're listening and, and they're like, oh my gosh, this resonates with me. And I recognize in this moment that I have some of these body shame issues and I have, I'm chasing after other people's dreams. I want something different. I don't know how, um, what would their steps be and, and who would, who would want to work with you? Like, who would you want to work with? Because we talk about attracting and like you and I are in sync of, you know, not everybody is going to be a coaching client of mine or an investor in, in one of our, um, in one of our real estate deals, right? Because it's not for everybody. And so who would be attracted and who would you like to work with? Yeah. So I would say your first couple steps are again, deciding what it is that you want and if you you can't think about what it is that you want, I want you to think about what it is that you don't want. That that's super yeah. super. Um, I feel like a lot of people when that they're like, well, I don't know what I want. And I'm like, okay, well, what do you not want? And they can give me a whole list of things that they do not want. So let's start there, and then think about your priorities in your life right now. Like it is your, you know, like for instance, for me, my priorities are my health my family and my business, those three things. And I tell people that because when I say no to somebody, they need to know that this is why, and you know, your priorities and things will change, but it's really just bringing, being gentle with yourself. So I would say, get clear on what it is that you want, get clear, get clear on your priorities, and then start taking small, consistent steps. And again, consistency is going to look different for everybody. It's not this consistency is not hundred percent, 24 seven. Right. And start taking steps toward that. Start listening to podcasts, you know, feeding your mind as much as you are, you know, working your body, work your mind and your soul too. Like what it what feels good to you to do and um really trying to like put those blinders on so that you can focus on what it is that you want. As far as who I work with, um, I do work with a lot of women. I have worked with some men, but a lot of the people that I work with are ready to really make a clear identity shift. They're not really in it for like the short-term weight loss. Um, They're in it for the long haul and we're here to make sustainable results. A lot of times like we get stuck in that yo-yo train. And so I really focus on getting them out of that. I also help them heal their relationship to their body with food, all of those good things. And it rolls over into every, every area of their life, right? It rolls over into their business, into their content creation, a lot of times um, people think that being consistent in their life is going to block their creativity. However, when you are consistent with habits that support you. It actually opens you up to more creativity. It opens your, you have more time and energy to think about creative things and to go out and do the things that you want to do. So um, the one I usually work with women that are content creators, growing businesses online and um but I have worked with a few men too. I love this. And by the way, hey, gentlemen, conscious investor out there, here mm-hmm. you go. Here's your, you know, like help it. You can help around how Ashley's, you know, clientele right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this, this is interesting. How would we know? Okay. I'm going to do two things here. One, I just want to do an, a quick aside to say, I love the idea of having um, in conscious investor, you know, this, I love having a predictable, clear, consistent schedule. And I feel like it's, I'm basically the dog that's ready to go out for a walk because when I put my shoes on my dog, he knows the moment I even start to put the shoes on, he's like, Oh, Oh, we're going for a walk. We're going, yeah, this is it. And he's all happy and excited. And, and I think that we become like that. We're like, Oh wait, my writing time's coming up or my video time or my, you know, my time to talk to, you know, my clients and my investors, like it gets you excited about it. Cause you know, and you can anticipate it and you're prepared for it. So that's my quick aside. Um, I love that I'm putting, I'm, basically likening myself to my dog. This is great. (laughs) It's so true. Um, So I struggle with ADHD. I'm not medicated because clearly I was addicted to the medication. 
and I had to learn to, I like how you say that, like, be like your dog. I had to learn how to switch my, like where I'm getting my dopamine from, right? Because I could easily get my dopamine from scrolling or from drinking wine or from doing all of these different things. And when I learned that I could get my dopamine from those things, I was like, well, I can, I can just switch it to, to the things that I want to do, like getting up early. I have to walk before I create content. I actually create content while I'm walking, but it's part, it, it, it does get me excited to be able to follow through with those routines and those schedules and things. So I love that. So y'all heard it here first. We're all, we all want to be like the dog ready to go for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I know that we're going to need to wrap up here in just a moment, but I want to ask this question is to say, oftentimes we don't recognize that we do have a bad relationship. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to extract that word bad because it doesn't need to be labeled, but we have a, a dysfunctional relationship. It's not a relationship that's working and beneficial with food or our body. But I think a lot of times we're oblivious to it because it's been the norm for our entire life. So if I were listening in on this conversation, I'm like, oh, I don't have any issues with that. But then actually, wait, maybe I do. And we talked about, you were, you know, we've talked about raising our awareness and um, becoming clear about what we want to do and committed to taking those small steps. But if I am having that first aha about maybe this relationship with my body or food isn't healthy, um, or I'm sorry, AI is going to totally roast me on this, by the way, because I run these transcripts through AI and ask for feedback and yeah. they're going to say, here you are going on a long winded um, question once again, Julie. So I apologize. I'm working on this conscious investor, I promise. <laughs> but I, I guess what I'm trying to ask is um, how do we even know? How can we, if I've never recognized that, what would be kind of like the, the splash of water in the face to go to say, come to slap out of it? Yeah, I would, I would say the way that you feel around food, the way that you when you lay your head down at night, like what are the things that are going through your head? Are you proud of the things that you've done? Are you beating mm -hmm. yourself? Are you saying I'm going to start over tomorrow? Um, are, are you having one um, meal and then saying, well, that was a bad meal. So I'm just going to go eat whatever I want after that. Everybody, everybody has a different relationship with food. Mine was really like, you know, if I'm not eating quote unquote good, then it's going, it's all out the window. And so I had to remove, like you said, like remove those labels, like good and bad and all of those different things. Like food is food. And sometimes I eat to enjoy it. And sometimes I'm eating to fuel my body. Um, but just how your energy is around it, right? Like, is it bringing you energy? Is it draining your energy? Are you feeling anxious around it? Are you depressed after you eat? Like paying attention to how you're feeling is probably going to show you where your relationship is with food. Oh, I love this. This is so powerful and so insightful. And, and we, I know that you and I could carry this conversation on for hours and go into so much more depth on these different topics which is why I'm super excited that you have a robust channel where people can go and learn and so much more. Can you um, let the conscious investor know how can they learn more about what you do and follow you and join your ecosystem? Yes. So I mostly hang out on Instagram at the Ashley Beeman. I'm also on Facebook. Um, playing around with TikTok, jumping fully back in next year, but every social platform is the Ashley Beeman. Um, and you can find me there. I also wanted to gift your audience, um, a masterclass that I have, it's called identity evolution. And it's the, it's the process of how I made the identity shift of going from like a yo-yo dieter to sustainably losing 60 pounds. So if anybody's interested in learning that process, I broke down the 10 steps that I went through inside of there. And I wanted to give that to your audience. I absolutely love this. How do they get this? By the way, I want this too. I'm like, how do I get this? Not how do they get this? Now? <laughs> so, um, when we're done, I'll send you the link. And if you could put it in the show notes, that would be awesome. Awesome. We will, Conscious Investor, make sure you go and check this out. What a gift to have that identity evolution. And 
when we are looking at identity, we're not just talking about our physical identity. We have to have, and this is why I brought Ashley on because remember conscious measure, I'm here to support you in the three echelons, health, mindset, wealth. And, and Ashley actually covers like, boom, two of these outstandingly. And I'm sure you cover the wealth part. Also, we just haven't even you know, like gone down that path yet, but you know, what a gift to say, okay, how do I, how do I reframe my identity? How do I get into this? I'm so excited. Yes. I'm so excited for you guys to be able to access that. Oh, it's amazing. Ashley, thank you so much for taking time to serve the conscious investor community. And I'm looking forward to meeting you in person at the conscious investor growth summit in March of 2024. Yes, I'm so excited to be coming. Thank you so much for having me on. And I can't wait to see everybody soon. Amazing. Conscious Investor, you don't want to miss the Growth Summit. Ashley will be there. She is one of our key speakers on the health platform. And so you can see why I, you know, she's invited into that, you know, into that position because she's covering so much of it. And while you're at that event, this isn't, remember, we collapse the distance between the stage and the speakers. Like you, you will be able to talk to Ashley. It's not like, oh, Ashley's there. I can't talk to her. It's like, oh no, here we are a room. We have 150 tickets. That's it you actually will have access to all the speakers. They're there to serve you and to support you in, in all of your goals. Okay. And we want to make sure that you want to make sure that you're there. I want to see you there. I think Ashley wants to see you there. <laughs> yes, yes. We want to see you there. Awesome. Conscious investor. I appreciate you sticking around until the end. And if you haven't already, would you please just leave an honest rating and review. It helps the, the show out so much. And recently the show's been, been performing even better. And that's a result of you. That's a dire direct reflection of you taking time, the 30 seconds to scroll in, on whatever platform you are on and to make sure that you leave an honest rating a written review doesn't take long and it makes a huge difference. And um, I appreciate all the follows you guys are what make the conscious investor a success. And I appreciate you until next time. Cheers to health mindset and wealth. Hey, conscious investor. I have a quick, humble ask. And that is that you head on over to Apple podcasts and leave an honest rating and review. These rating and reviews allow me to reach other guests that are, you know, of different levels and statures and prominence and all of that. It really shows to them that, wow, you have engaged listeners who care about your show. If you would take a moment and go and um, leave an honest rating and review, and the platform is, it's on Apple Podcasts. And to do that, you go to the main show. So if you're on an episode, you just have to click on the Conscious Investor Podcast. And if you scroll towards the bottom, them, you'll see in little tiny font, it's so small, it'll say, um, write your own review, like write a review, just click on that. If you would take a moment and just let me know, um, me and these amazing guests that come onto the show, you know, something that is helping and supporting you in your life. It absolutely mean the world to me. And it supports a show in ways beyond measure. You have no idea. So thanks so much for taking, you know, 60, 90 seconds to just head over to Apple podcasts to leave that honest rating and review conscious investor absolutely means the world to me.